Hey guys, welcome to ExcelForNoobs.com. In this video series, I'm going to show you how to create and work with Microsoft Excel tables. All right, so uh, what I have here is I have a range of cells that contains data. This, by definition, is a table, but it's not an Excel table. Okay, uh, what this is is different information of real estate listings and the agents that are uh, that are um, the sales agents for the listings. And what I'm going to do is I want to turn the, I want to convert this into a table. If you want to go ahead and enter this data in um, to your Excel worksheet and follow along, you can. Uh, you don't have to make make it as you know enter as much data as I have. I have. 48 different rows. You can do something like 10, 5, 12 rows, whatever you want to do, just something similar. And you can follow along. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a table. I'm going to convert this range of cells into a table. To do that, I need to select the entire range of cells. I'm doing that here. I select the entire range of cells that I want to convert into a table. Then up here in the insert, I click the insert tab, and you can see we have the tables group I'm going to click the table button or table command alright here there's a uh, is the create table dialog box my table has headers there's this option right here the checkbox that says my table has headers we have headers in this table you can see here where it says agent county street number street name square footage and so on this these are column headers we have them there so we want this box to be checked and you can see that our column headers have our drop-down buttons which where we can sort and filter our table and that's one of the one of the biggest um, I guess the the most useful things for tables is being able to sort and filter <clears throat> all right so uh, if we didn't Let's just assume we have a table, or we had some a range of data that we wanted to convert into a table, except we didn't have column headers. I'll just show you what would happen. All right, so I just copied and pasted a few um, rows out of out of uh, that table. I'll go in here. I'm going to insert the table just as I did before, except for I'm going to unselect the my table has headers because I don't <clears throat> click OK, and you can see here I added some generic column headers column 1 column 2 column 3 i can just i would just go in here and rename them agent county if i didn't like the style of that i could change the font to whatever color i wanted in size all right. Okay, something else um, that you know tables have. You can see they're automatically styled, and I'll go into more detail in the styling. But whenever you add a table, it automatically adds styles by default. Um, something that's really cool about tables. Say you have a lot. You know this. You can see that my my table is not entirely visible on my screen. Now, if I have a cell selected within the table, and I start scrolling down, or using my mouse, you can see up here that my column headers replace the column letters. So even though those are in row 2, even though row 2 is not visible, my column headers are still visible. And um, this is extremely useful whenever you're working with a table. You know, say every cell within the table contained numerical values. It could be, it could get pretty confusing. You wouldn't, you might, you might think you're working, in um, in one column, and you're actually you're accidentally working in another column. So that's where it, could, it would uh, become useful. Okay, now let's uh, kind of go into how to style your table. Up here again, you select uh, the. You can select any cell within your table, and this table tools contextual tab will be there, available for you. And then the, the design tab, which is only available if you're working within your table. You can see it's not there anymore. Click on the table, and it's made available. <clears throat> right here I have different pre-formatted 
um, table styles. And I can just scroll through and click them. So that they're all visible, instead of me having to scroll through, I can also click this more button right here. And now you can see I have light, medium, and dark. And it's just a preference. Preference, whether it's your preference or whoever you're creating the table for. Um, another thing you can do is custom table styles. You go in here to your, again, you have to have a cell within your table selected. In the design tab. Click the more button right here. And then go down to, to the very bottom. You're going to click on this new table styles command. And um, you have different options right here. You have the new table styles. Um, dialog box which appears and you can just click on whatever you want to change you want to however you want to format your <clears throat> custom table style add some colors and you can see there I added some in the last first column maybe add some effects This is the fill effects dialog box. Maybe add some patterns. Whatever you want to do. Patterns with colors. And effects. Alright. I don't know why I would use that, but I could click OK. Alright. It didn't as you can see it didn't automatically convert my table into that style but there's a custom tab up here and whenever you mess with them it will throw your custom table styles up in there and you can use it <clears throat> if you really like it you can make it your default alright another thing we're going to go over is uh, you have the table style options right here let me get this back to a more um, useful table style I guess more common table style. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna click on uh, click on the cell again, so I can activate this design ribbon, the contextual tab, the table tools. Click on the design ribbon. Right here are my table style options in this group. All right, this uh, header rows is by default checked. Banded rows is checked by default in the filter buttons. All right. So the header row, basically if I uncheck this box, my header rows disappear. They're still there. You just can't see them. They, didn't, they weren't deleted. All right, I just click that, they come back. Now, what happens if I were to enter something here? Into, this is cell D2. Now, what happens if I go here? and I click my header row. It pretty much just shifted my table down one row is what it did, but it still did not delete my column headers. Alright, let's undo this. Let's put our column headers back. Okay, the total row, if I were to check that, it doesn't do that by default, but it adds a total row to the very bottom of my uh, table. You can see right here it, uh, in the very bottom right cell of the uh, of the table automatically summed up the list price in every single cell in the total row I have options of formulas I don't think that there's a formula that I would want to use for counties or street numbers even though the, these are numbers this is, this is still qualitative data this is not quantitative data now square footage is qualitative data. Say I wanted to find the average square footage, I can go down here and select the average formula. It's right there made available to me. The variance, standard deviation, any formula I want I can add and add there automatically without having to actually enter the formula. <clears throat> Same thing with bedrooms bathrooms I could find the average or the total number of bedrooms that we have listed available all right
right? That's what the total row is. 